Hoy la policía está realizando una búsqueda en México, Florida y Texas para localizar al líder de una cadena de narcotraficantes ligada por lo menos a una docena de asesinatos satánicos en México. La policía también busca a una mujer que sería, según el fiscal a cargo de Texas, la bruja de la operación. En el rancho de Matamoros, México, había señales de carnicería de seres humanos por todos lados. El cobertizo era el lugar donde se llevaban a cabo las torturas. Fue aquí donde, según las autoridades, 14 personas fueron mutiladas durante un periodo de nueve meses, incluido el estudiante de medicina de la Universidad de Texas, Mark Kiliroy, de 21 años, cuyas piernas fueron cortadas a la altura de las rodillas. También le cortaron la cabeza y cocinaron parte del cuerpo. What's up YouTube, welcome back to my channel Late Night Creeps. On this episode I'll be talking about a narco satanist that goes by the name of Adolfo Constanzo aka The Godfather. Adolfo Constanzo was born in Miami, Florida but grew up in Puerto Rico with a well-known stepfather and a Cuban immigrant mother. From a very young age, Adolfo's mother would introduce him to the world of magic she would often take Adolfo with her on various trips down to Haiti to learn and practice Haitian voodoo. During his teenage years, he would become the apprentice of the local sorcerer. He began to practice a religion called Palomayembo. Palomayembo is practiced in secrecy. Its dark rituals involve the use of animal and sometimes even human remains. When Adolfo became an adult, he moved to Mexico City and ran a successful spellcasting business. There he had taken his knowledge of Palo Mayembo and had mixed it with Santeria, Aztec warrior rituals and blood sacrifices. A recipe for a bloodthirsty cult. Spell prices would go depending on the type of animal they used during the sacrifice such as goats, chickens, snakes, zebras, or even lions, or lion cubs. Slowly but surely, he gained a cult following. Adolfo's top clients were cartel members and corrupt high-ranking officials, but nobody paid top dollar like the cartel lords who occasionally paid him visits. Eventually, Adolfo had also gained connections. Convinced his spells were responsible for helping the cartel become so successful, Adolfo demanded to become business partners with the Calzadas. The Calzadas were one of the most powerful families involved in the business at that time. They rejected his offer and as a payback, Adolfo made seven members of the, the Calzada family disappear. The bodies were found miss with missing ears, toes, fingers, brains and spines. He tried again, this time with the powerful Hernandez brothers. They had recently lost one of their big distributors and Adolfo wanted to, to take over the operations. Adolfo managed to convert the Hernandez brothers to his disturbing version of Palomayombo, promising them the ability to become bulletproof and even invincible to law enforcement. It wasn't long before Adolfo was in charge of the day-to-day -day operations and moved to the Rancho Santa Elena. Here he stored cocaine and marijuana. He had also met a woman named Sara Aldrete. He was especially fond of her. So much so, he taught her everything he knew about Palomayembo. Adolfo initiated her into his cult and made her second in command. The cult referred to her as the godmother and Adolfo as the godfather. On that ranch property was this shed where he would commit most of his depraved ritual murders. He would demand his cult to bring him human victims to sacrifice to his gods. Sometimes his cult brought back corrupt officers, gang members or rivals of the drug trade. Adolfo would sometimes tape his victims before ritually slaying them. Sarah and Hernandez brothers would also take part. A religious nganga, a cauldron, 
is usually filled with an assorted of natural elements such as sticks, rocks, insects. Adolfo would fill his cauldron with victims' remains, bones, tongues, brains would boil with blood. This stew would be ingested by his followers. Sometimes they would also wear their victims' vertebrae as necklaces. In early March 1988, Adolfo wanted his spells to be even more powerful. He demanded his followers kidnap an all-American white male for his next sacrifice. Mark Jenkins Kilroy was described by his family as an intelligent, athletic, and loving, and overall great person. He attended Texas University where he was studying to become a doctor. On March 10, 1988, Mark had recently turned 21 and had planned to spend his spring break partying in Mexico. On the night of March 13, Mark was drinking with friends at a Mexican bar when he was abducted by Adolfo's henchmen. He was taken to Rancho Santa Elena. Mark was held captive for hours. According to reports, Mark was tortured, sodomized before being dragged outside and made to kneel on a tarp. Now on his knees, gagged and blindfolded, Adolfo came from behind and struck Mark on the back of the head with the machete. He died instantly. Mark's brain was removed and boiled with his body. They removed his spinal column to make amulets and had his legs chopped off below the knee and devoured. The rest of Mark Kilroy was mutilated and burned. Mark failed to contact his friends and family. They became worried and reported his disappearance. Law enforcement agencies from both countries began to investigate the case. On April 1st, 1988, one of the Hernandez brothers, Serafin, had sped through a police roadblock. He had believed that Adolfo's rituals had made him invincible. The authorities began to pursue Serafin and he led them straight to Rancho Santa Elena. Once there, the authorities found a huge amount of marijuana and further investigation found traces of horrors that were committed in the property shed. Police questioned one of the property's caretakers. He admitted to watching over Mark before his execution. On April 13, the Hernandez brothers were detained and confessed to murdering and committing several other murders on that property. Mark Kilroy's body was exhumed along with 14 other bodies. The Hernandez brothers were forced to help find and dig out the rest of the remaining bodies. On May 6, 1989, authorities were able to track down Adolfo and Sarah and several other cult members to an apartment building in Mexico City. Adolfo peeked out his window and saw police vehicles starting to park outside his apartment. So he grabbed his assault rifle and began to fire at them from his window. After about 45 minutes of gunfire, the apartment building was completely surrounded by police. Adolfo knew it was over. He ordered one of his henchmen to shoot him and his bodyguard. Adolfo and his partner were gunned down while Sarah and a few other cult members surrendered to the police. In the aftermath, 14 cultists were indicted on several charges, including multiple murders, weapons, and narcotics, violations, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. Sarah and the Hernandez brothers were convicted of multiple murders and were sentenced to severe prison sentences over 60 years each. Sarah was not charged with the murder of Mark Kilroy, but American authorities plan to prosecute her if she is ever released. That's the end of the story of the narco-satanist. Thanks for checking in, y'all. Peace.